It's goop time again! Oh god, no. So I've been putting this off for months. This show premiered the second day that I was in Utah for the Sundance Film Festival, and I'd actually planned to watch it while I was there. I brought my iPad, I was gonna download the episodes on Netflix, which I did, but it was so goddamn boring that I couldn't actually sit through one entire episode. And maybe it's because I haven't drank the goopy Kool-Aid, but my god, I was not anticipating it to be so just devoid of anything interesting. But it's been on my list and I've slowly been making my way through the episodes since February, but I've been doing everything in my power to avoid this. I literally made it through three Fifty Shades movies because it was more interesting and less disturbing than this. But I kept getting reminded of Gwyneth because she's prancing around with her hundred plus dollar face masks while at the same time promoting these like immune booster tablets that are supposed to prevent you from getting sick. So I figured it's time we got to get back on the Goop Lab and suffer. So I just finished the last episode not too long ago and I wanna put my head through a wall. But before we get into the specifics of the show, I will again clarify that not all modern me medicine is infallible. We're dealing with an opioid crisis because people are just greedy and suck. There's obviously a lot of things that we don't know. And oftentimes we like over medicate people for a variety of different issues, including mental health issues when there are other options. But this is the other side of that sh coin. You've got people just financially taking advantage of others, selling things that in the best case scenario just don't work for egregious prices, but then in the worst case scenario will cause you long term damage and harm when you should have sought actual medical help. So just as a quick goop refresher, this is Gwyneth Paltrow's company, GP with the OO in the middle, because she thought it sounded good. And here's some of the stupid shit that they've sold over the years, some of it they've claimed that have healing and medical properties. Psychic vampire repellent, which is actually just a blend of lavender, rosemary, and juniper. Like, girl, I'm gonna be honest, uh, if you wanna repel people that you think are draining your energy, all you need is a squirt bottle full of water. If you just keep spraying them, they'll go away. Carnelian stones, which they claimed could help cure infertility, which was particularly egregious. The infamous porous jade egg, which they were sued over. A coffee enema, which isn't just the gut reaction that a lot of people have when they drink coffee. I literally mean this was a device that was used to shoot coffee up people's asses. Which, shocker, have so many serious issues linked to their use. And my personal favorite that I mentioned all the way back in 2018 when I made my first Goop video, these shoes that they claimed had a mood lifting equation in shoes. And I still maintain that I saw a dress that they were claiming had antidepressive qualities, but I can't find it anymore, probably because they got sued. Oh yeah, they got sued. Some of these claims are really hard to find now because they have a court order not to make false medical claims. So in my last video about Goop, I said that based on the trailer for the Goop Lab, it looked like they were most likely gonna create a misinformation sandwich. So they'd start and end with topics that have some kind of scientific backing to whatever degree, and then sprinkle all the crazy shit in the middle. And I was wrong. They made three and a half episodes about things that have scientific studies, either in the works or moderate backing backing with questionable delivery, minus the third episode, which I have to say was pretty much completely fine. The only thing it's marketing is a fancy dildo, and you know where you're in for a wild ride when I say the most normal thing that's being marketed here is a fancy dildo. But then it's a roller coaster ride of bullshit. And of course the episodes start with a disclaimer. The following series is designed to entertain and inform, not provide medical advice. You should always consult your doctor when it comes to your personal health or before you start any treatment. Netflix lawyers were definitely doing the best they could to save their asses, but the best way to save your ass is not give Gwyneth Paltrow a platform for this stuff. Anyways, so the first episode was psychedelics, which yes, have been studied and are actually being heavily studied right now uh, for their efficacy, largely when looking into issues of depression and PTSD. But this is where I'd like to take a strong moment to say that even though these things are being studied, if you are someone who has or potentially has the genetic predisposition for mental disorders like schizophrenia or bipolar disorder, you should not take any kind of psychedelics. They can magnify or trigger symptoms in certain individuals and in really serious way and that's why as a treatment method it should only be done under controlled medical studies and you definitely should not be trying this by I don't know flying to Jamaica finding a couple of hippies and just you know taking some shroom tea. So who wants to guess how they approached this for the show? They flew a bunch of people out to Jamaica to trip on some shroom tea. So it starts going through the reasons why people wanted to be a part of this trip and obviously most of the office wanted to because 
trip to Jamaica. Why wouldn't you want that? Renee wanted to feel more creative. There was a couple people who had personal traumas or emotional connection issues. And then this chick, Gwyneth left side the entire show who annoys the hell out of me. She just wants to feel the universe and just like let the symptoms just overtake her. Real medical. Be with the spirit of the mushroom. There is science that backs psychedelics in a lot of ways. They just don't show any of it. Then we get episode two where they just ship a bunch of people out to jump into freezing water. Now these first two episodes end up feeling like that kid that barely got into university flunked out and then when they decide they're gonna travel the world instead of tell their parents that they failed, they say things like, you know, I just don't feel like the structured nature of higher education was for me. So I'm just gonna travel around the world without enough money to do so and beg for things from people who don't actually have as much as me. But at the same time, I'm gonna party like every night because what's the point of being in these crazy places if you don't experience the nightlife to cover up the fact that they were just too stupid to make it through intro to psychology. So this episode largely focuses on somebody named Wim Hof. And you've probably heard of him in some capacity He's the guy that's really famous for being able to like prepare his body to be in extremely cold temperatures without any real adverse effects and how he talks about how that can kind of mental, that mental fortitude can help you in a variety of other places. And he essentially does this through a series of breathing techniques that essentially make you hyperventilate and then other meditation practices that become this full regime that he has established. So like I said, I do think breathing techniques work in a variety of ways and obviously meditation has been proven to help in a lot of stuff like with mindfulness, but I don't think it's as dramatic drastic as he claims it is. For example, he thinks that his methods could cure up to 95% of illnesses, including certain types of cancer. You learn how to breathe deep. You can go into the cold water and adapt. And with that, you become the alchemist of life itself. But he does at least clarify that it would need a lot of research, which automatically makes him better than like 100% of the other people who claim that things they do claim cancer. But the main concern here is that he could be giving a false sense of hope to people who really believe that this could work and his level of enthusiasm behind the whole thing and his definite belief in all this stuff kind of can make that confusing for some people. Now, the one thing I noticed that I didn't like is that they mentioned an endotoxin study uh, and I decided to look into it a little bit more and the show obviously worded it in a way that was not accurate. So essentially they had like injected him with an endotoxin and then they had done a study with 24 people. 12 of them had no training. 12 of them had training from him and they made it sound like the people that had the training from him didn't experience any side effects of the injection when in reality they were just reduced symptoms which is still really cool that you could train your body to have an immune response like that but don't tell people that this training prevented all the symptoms from being injected with an endotoxin as if it's some kind of guaranteed flu treatment very cool but not the way that they worded it. And of course they don't back up that, they don't show that study anywhere. They just say it, they just write it down. Also, some people have died practicing these methods. He does say, you know, don't do it when you're in a pool. You're gonna do this kind of stuff. Make sure you're like grounded, sitting or lying on the floor. But he seems to do these breathing techniques when he's in the colder water. So I can understand why some people following his teaching might end up doing it, but unfortunately it resulted in them, of course, hyperventilating, passing out and drowning. So episode three is actually the one that I really don't have anything negative to say about. It's really just all about like female sexuality, understanding the female anatomy, which they often don't, learning how to express their desires and relationships, different things like that. It's all positive. It gets a little bit weird at times. Like there's still some weird things like they talk about like the female and masculine side of the body and different things like that. But don't worry, it's gonna start going downhill soon. Episode four. So this is essentially the episode where rich people spend $250 on boxes of crappy food to feel hungry for five days. Should I be an idiot and do this for a video? Anyways, they talk about biological age in this and how you can lower it by changing your diet specifically through fasting, which is such a fad right now on top of detoxing. And it's all largely made up from people that are trying to make a quick cash grab on things that might have some semblance of reality, but they tout all these crazy benefits that just have no backing, especially the detox stuff. So the whole idea is that these boxes are supposed to mimic fasting while still making sure you get all of your like micro and macro nutrients. But I don't think it counts is fasting because like you're still eating, you're just under eating. So I don't, it's definitely better than just not eating food for five days, but I have questions about this study. But hey, if they wanna spend $250 on a box of freeze dried slop so they can try to say their biological age went down by six months, have at her. The second part of this video gets 
even more wild. So they start doing facial acupuncture to like make up more time because they heard it might do something for visible aging. And then they do something called vampire facials, which is not something from an inappropriate Twilight parody. This is actually taking your own blood and like separating the plasma and then injecting it back into your face. And studies have shown that this is no more effective than just injecting salt water in your face. Look, at the end of the day, obviously, if you eat healthier and you actually get exercise, you're probably gonna be in significantly better shape than people who eat like crap all the time and don't ever do anything. But the larger theatrics around this episode are where things get really muddy. Like you can't measure changes in longevity. You can't just say, oh, well, after you've eaten this for five days, you're now gonna live for an extra three years. And when it comes to the face stuff, Man, rich people just need to chill. But now we get on to the real shit shows. And remember I said it was a ro roller coaster? So this is when we start getting down to the, the bottom and just imagine that this is a roller coaster that's broken. So like once it hits the bottom, like there's just nowhere else to go. Episode five, holy shit we get energy healers. So we're talking about energy manipulation to heal the body. I had an exorcism. <laughs> <laughs> I dry heaved for a while. Again, really dislike this woman in particular. What the f are you doing to people? <laughs> stealing their money. He's stealing their money. So let's get some background on the good whatever this guy is. I work with energy as a body worker and a chiropractor. Of course he's a chiropractor. I'm done. I am what is what is it with what is it with chiropractors, man? And of course he thinks he can cure cancer. What is it with chiropractors thinking they can cure cancer? Just stay in your lane, wackadoodle. In 2018, he said this, many things are possible. Cancers can be gone in an instant. I've had patients that I've worked with where they had been diagnosed with breast cancer and there was a shift. They felt themselves shifting into an entirely different reality where the nodule was gone. They would go in, get tested, and it's not there. They're like, what happened? In spontaneous remission. They literally flipped, in my experience, into a different version of themselves. In that reality, they did not have cancer. I've experienced things like this many times working with people, and it's been validated by testing and science. Where? It's time to stop. Please stop O oh, to see the things that are on the Netflix cutting room floor in this episode. This guy is manipulating scientific studies to fit his needs when they don't actually apply at all. I can't take a study about alcohol being used to sterilize surfaces and say that if I drink a bunch of alcohol, I sterilize the inside of my body against illnesses. You can try, but that's not what that means. Energy healing has largely been shown to have the same effect as any other placebo. Basically, if you believe in it enough, it can have positive effects on your body, but it's not actually working the way that they're saying it is. Because energy healers have been shown time and time again that they can't even identify energies from other people if they can't see where they are. And I felt my hand go inside of her body. <gasps> no, thank you. You know, maybe I could believe the integrity of some of these people going through this whole clinic if they weren't employees working for a company selling and promoting psychic vampire repellent. Give people non-alcoholic beer, tell them it's Heineken, and watch how long it takes them to act like a drunk. That about some this up. Episode six, we are finally at the end and holy shit, they brought in the psychic mediums. I get really scared of my uh, intuition sometimes. Gwyneth, the entire world has been terrified by your intuition the moment you started telling people to put porous jade eggs up their hoo-hahs. Now I talked about psychic mediums before in my video about psychic kids and they are disgusting. They oftentimes take advantage of people that are grieving so they're right up there with those like shitty lying faith healing televangelists. And as mentioned in that video, psychics tend to use cold and hot readings in combination with leading questions to dance around issues and let the person that they're supposed to be reading lead them in the right direction for the narrative they're looking for. So cold reading specifically involve reading body languages, you know, visible changes in reactions as they say things. They'll kind of ask little questions to see if they can find little threads to pull. Hot readings, on the other hand, are when the psychic has pre-existing knowledge of a situation before they start the reading, which they then use as their method of entry on that subject. If you want more details on how this happens, I will link that Psychic Kids video up above that has more information on situations on where that's happened. And for the most part, everyone's super interested 
into it. They're doing little psychic pictures. And Except this chick who is not down to clown and not ready to give this lady an easy out at any point of this entire episode. I feel like it's your grandmother's sister. My grandmother didn't have a sister. Is it like possible just to not have this superpower? It's possible <laughs> to be very much stuck in your frontal lobe. Sorry kid, it's your frontal lobe. It's just overactive. You know, the control panel of the brain that deals with things like problem solving. As in her brain is solving the problem that this is bullshit. When you're proving something that seems like outlandish and crazy, you have to be like spot on. And now they're suddenly like, hey, you're actually reading the chick over here. Ooh, no, oopsies. Hey, Laura, this is really strange. I think you're actually reading Lindsay right now. <laughs> that can happen. I need them to click back over to this other chick. I think her name's Anna so that we can get the Jim Halpert moment of her being like, you, no, you've got to be kidding me. Can anyone check to see if this girl is okay? Like, did she lose her job for not like drinking the Kool-Aid in this situation? I would love to have a chat with her. Anyways, this episode basically just ends with people talking about how disappointed they are that the general population thinks they're like scam artists, which... They largely are. But at least my suffering is over. So overall, the show just dissolves into a train wreck of people trying to take advantage of others for money. The Goop Way! So the show mentions a lot of scientific studies, but it literally never shows them. And they seem to exaggerate or outright lie about the results. Then it just puts the Goop staff through a bunch of this stuff and barely follows up after the fact. And even if they did, that's not scientific evidence or actual testing. Netflix, you've made some incredible things. And it looks like you've got some really good stuff on the horizon. But please, for the love of all that is good in the world, stop giving platforms to this crap. But hey, this is a disgustingly boring show, so maybe nobody's watching it. Seriously, how the hell did you make a show about psychedelics, sex, psychics, and energy healing boring? How? Anyways, that is going to do it for today's video. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Subscribe if you are new. Follow if you enjoyed the video. Again, getting pretty close to 100,000 subscribers. I'm going to be really annoying mentioning that. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. And we'll catch you all later.